Uh, okay, so a lot of you guys might not be ready for what I'm about to talk about. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about what really moves the market, and I'm going to be dropping a little bit of a bomb here on the Forex trading community. Okay, are you ready for it? Here it comes. Price action, I'm going to use the acronym PA, is not king, okay, in my opinion. Have you ever heard the saying, price action, technical analysis is king to understanding how the markets move and how to make money in them? Well, in today's video, I am going to be the big, bad, evil person who says that that is not necessarily the case, at least in my opinion. Today, I'm going to be telling you a little bit about what truly moves the markets. And guess what? It's not just a pin bar. It's not just uh, you know a higher high and a higher low. There is more to it, uh, and there is a lot that drives markets up and down. So if you stay tuned in this video, I know it's going to be a little bit on the longer side, but if you stay tuned, I'm going to talk to you about what really drives the foreign exchange up, down, sideways, what strengthens currencies, etc. So let's get into it. Okay, so when I say price action is king, the first thing I want to say before I get a bunch of people, I can already hear, hear the, the keyboards typing right now. They're saying, you know, Nick, you, you're you stupid for saying that. Yes, it does rule the markets. I'm not going to say that price action is bad. Don't get me wrong. I, I use it myself. Price action is an important tool in the toolbox. But picture that technical analysis in general, this is a really ugly toolbox, but technical analysis is one of the tools in the toolbox, in my opinion. But there are other things or components that we can add to our toolbox to help to give us a better edge in trading Forex, okay? How do you define an edge? Is it just gonna come from a pin bar? Is it gonna come from a moving average crossover? Maybe you can get a little bit of an advantage from some of those things, but I feel that there are some things that we heavily, heavily have to talk about. So let's get into it. What are the other things? Well, uh, the first thing I want to talk about is fundamental analysis. Believe it or not, the market is not moving up just because of uh, you know the candlestick patterns and price action that is going on. The truth is there are fundamental drivers uh, in the foreign exchange market every single day. What are fundamental drivers? Well, I'll list a few uh, now. Okay, when you're looking at a currency and you're trying to evaluate a currency, there are things that come into play. For example, if we are talking about the US dollar, we are talking about the US U.S. is obviously uh, currency, and each of these major banks, uh, major institutions, or not major institutions, major central banks, they offer a currency, right? You've got the Australian dollar, the New Zealand dollar, the Canadian dollar, the Japanese yen, etc. Uh, each one of these can be broken out into a couple main factors that we're going to talk about. You have things like GDP growth, okay? What is this, you might say? Well, GDP growth is the gross domestic product growth of an economy. Are there, uh, is there a growing amount of output from an economy? Is there a shrinking amount of a growth uh, in an economy? Is it growing but slower than others? That's a huge question mark to what is actually driving the markets up or down in the currency market. Well, another factor is, of course, things like unemployment. Unemployment. I'm going to do my best not to uh, misspell anything. So unemployment is another huge thing. Why? Well, because you sort of have uh, factors here that could lead into big price movements. If you have strong employment in an economy, it is likely good for GDP growth. It likely uh, attributes more to the potential for an economy to grow at a more rapid pace. And ultimately, a rapidly growing economy tends to strengthen its currency. Why? Because investors from around the world want to actually buy something like the US dollar if it is looking strong in the area of GDP growth. Okay, so there are all these factors. These are fundamental factors that you're not going to hear a lot about on YouTube from your average trading guru who is just talking about, uh, you know, double tops and, you know, head and shoulders. And well, all those things are fine. Don't get me wrong, but they're not the only thing. And they are certainly not the, the driving force in the markets. This stuff is the driving force in the markets. Markets. And in this video, like I said, I'm going to try and give you guys a, a surface level view as to what to be paying attention to, in my opinion, uh, on the fundamental analysis standpoint to actually look to trade Forex successfully. So we've got GDP. We've talked about unemployment. The next one is a big one, okay? It's going to be your interest 
rates. So remember how I just talked about for a second that we are ta- thinking about foreign investors wanting to buy a currency? Well, one of the reasons that they might want to buy it is because of a country's interest rate. Now, interest rates are basically what you, they're sort of like a dividend. If you're, if you're familiar with a stock, you know how a stock, uh, sometimes stocks may offer uh, a dividend. So that means that the investors that hold onto the stock can be compensated in the form of a dividend over time. Right. Well, similar to that, currencies and central banks can offer a interest rate to their lenders. Well, a higher interest rate is usually viewed as bullish for an economy. Have you ever noticed the Fed meetings in the United States can cause some massive volatility like we've seen just recently on the U.S. dollar? Well, one of the big reasons for that is because they are talking about policy that could lead to rate hikes, rate uh, rate holdings, whatever they're, they're thinking about can be discussed in those meetings and it can have a massive impact on the future pricing of the US dollar and any central bank uh, discussing their currency can be impactful to the value there. So interest rates are a massive one. So like I said, generally things to remember are that rising interest rates or monetary policies, uh, policies that are quote unquote tightening are generally viewed as bullish for a currency. So let me say that again for uh, for maybe the, the newer traders that might sound like a lot. If you have a central bank that is looking to tighten policies, meaning that they are looking to offer less stimulus to an economy, what that tells us is that if an economy is able to stand alone without stimulus or help from a central bank, that tells us that that economy looks strong, right? If the bank is having to step in all the time, the central banks are having to step in, that implies that the economy needs help and that the economy is not as healthy. So rising interest rates basically say, hey, we're pretty confident in the economy and we think that for the most part, we can step away from stimulus or helping that economy out. So raising interest rates is generally viewed as a very bullish or positive thing. And this is a huge driver in the currency market. When you have a central bank that is raising rates and looking to actively grow that, it can be incredibly bullish for the uh, the monetary po- or for the for the value of that currency. In fact, monetary policy around the world at the time of making this video after the pandemic or at least hopefully after we've got that delta strand potentially on in in sights of of investors. But this idea here is that we have been uh, everyone around the world, the central banks almost universally dropped interest rates around the world to sort of offer stimulus, right? So we had the situation where uh, you had the the markets were doing okay. And then you had the pandemic hit us. And we started entering into a period of decline as tons of unemployment came into factor, which also also led to massive slowing in GDP growth, which ultimately led to a loosening uh, monetary policy and ultimately interest rates being cut. Now, I know that that's a lot of things at once, and this is meant to be sort of an introductionary video, but I know that this concept is a lot for the new traders. So I'm trying to go through concepts as best I can. The best way I would say is just to dive into this stuff and really, really just learn as much as you can about it. Uh, it is stuff that, you know, you can probably get in an economics class and things like that, but I'm trying to do my best just to explain it the best I can. But anyways, this idea of a slowing economy, right? A struggling economy that needs stimulus may cause central banks to discuss the idea of cutting interest rates, right? You may, uh, you've heard maybe rate hikes and rate cuts. Well, rate cuts are usually in response to a slowing economy. And so we have seen a lot of that from 2020 onwards. Now, now we're sort of in a situation here where central banks are racing to do the opposite. Central banks are looking to try and raise rates. They're trying to come back and recover because, uh, you know, things have looked better. Things have recovered from the economy. People are going back to work. Employment is back on the rise. And then that leads to a growth in GDP, which ultimately, like I said, leads to central banks looking to loose, uh, or sorry, tarten, tighten their policy and ultimately 
perhaps raise uh, or, or raise interest rates, right? So those are all different factors at play. They all, all sort of talk to each other. Now, there is another one that I'm missing here off this list. You may be familiar if you're somewhat familiar with what I'm saying here. I'm going to add it to the top because I'm running out of space. You have inflation. Okay, now this is a huge one, especially in the U.S. where uh, recently the CPI numbers came out at 5.5% inflation. What that tells us that is that inflation is quite high here. Now, what does inflation tell us for the value of a currency? Well, the general idea is that if you have high inflation, they're printing a lot of the money uh, of that currency, and it could cause the devaluing of the US dollar or whatever currency that we're looking at, right? So multiple different central banks report their inflationary numbers to give investors an idea as to what inflation is looking like in that country. Now, inflation is sort of a tricky one because inflationary numbers, when they come out, if you have high inflation reported, what that often means is actually something really weird. When inflation numbers come out high, it usually is viewed as bullish for the currency. But you might say, well, Nick, that sounds weird. You would think that inflation high means that they're printing a lot of that currency and it should go down, right? Well, that kind of is a concern. But the thing here is, if you have high inflation, the usual response from many central banks is high inflation needs to be fought with with potentially raising interest rates and tightening monetary policy. Inflation usually occurs from uh, employment being high, you know, salaries being raised, consumer demand being high, lots of people using, you know, products and services out there. Ultimately, just a growing economy. A lot of times we see a he healthy level of rising inflation. However, when that gets out of hand, central banks like to cut back on stimulus and generally will be seen uh, raising rates. So that is why a signal of higher inflation oftentimes does receive positive sentiment and may even lead to monetary policy tightening and maybe even talking about raising interest rates. Uh, so there's a lot that I've said here and I want to encourage you really quick. If you're watching this video and you're like, wow, this is a lot of stuff. I encourage you to maybe save this to one of your, I don't know, playlists or something. And you can come back and watch this if you would like. Now, I do want to say one thing, uh, one more thing. So I'm going to clear the board. I'm going to talk about something here. So I want to talk about policy, okay? So we just discussed a whole bunch of stuff, but there are two main tools that come into play when we talk about policy. Now, we've really been talking about uh, these two things, especially recently. Uh, uh, the first one is going to be the uh, interest rate that we just discussed, okay? So these are tools available to, to the central banks around the world to sort of deal with uh, inflationary pressures to deal with a rising or weakening economy. Uh, this The first one is going to be interest rates, right? So they have the availability to raise or cut or hold interest rates. This tells us a lot about these central banks around the world. So let's we'll dive into that uh, in just a second. I want to put up on the second one on the board, however, that there is also the idea of tapering slash this idea of stimulus slash quantitative easing, okay? I'm not going to write all that out, but you guys hopefully get the point. So tapering, stimulus, quantitative easing, what is this? Well, before I discuss interest rates, this idea is the idea of stimulus. Have you ever heard of uh, the, you know, the idea of, of the Fed buying up stocks and bonds and things to sort of prop up the economy? It's been a big, big uh, theme here in the last year or so with the Fed in the United States. We had a record amount of stimulus basically launched into the economy to keep things going smoothly, right? Uh, so a central bank may, has this option. A lot of times uh, they print a ton of money, they buy their own bonds, they sort of pump money into the system to hopefully stimulate the economy enough to get it back on its feet. And that's sort of what they've been trying to do here in the U.S. Uh, and truthfully, in many places around the world. Most of the central banks are doing this. Now, recently, it's been a race to sort of who can start to hold off on the stimulus as much as possible. Because remember, lots of stimulus can result in higher inflation. Higher inflation is not necessarily a good thing. It's actually really hurtful to an economy. So or hurtful to the uh, to the consumers in an economy. If your if your currency gets devalued too much, the consumer uh, has less strength to their to their uh, product, and it makes it harder for them to buy uh, or or import goods from other countries. 
there's a lot here, you guys. I know I'm going through a million factors. So again, feel free to rewind the video if you need to. But let's start. Let's talk about interest rates. So again, I mentioned that interest rates are a tool available to central banks. They can raise rates, they can decrease rates or cut rates, and they can hold rates where they're at. Uh, the thing that we want to talk about, let's talk about this first variable first. Why would a central bank want to raise rates? Well, they may want to raise rates in response to high inflation, a growing economy, and to sort of combat a economy that is um, sort of overheating, if you will. There is a healthy level of growth in an economy. Something that is too fast could actually be dangerous because you can have it crash really dangerously and that can be really, really bad, right? So the Fed and most central banks, they want a healthy, uh, solid level of growth in an economy. Not too fast, not too slow. So if it is getting too fast, if it's getting out of hand, the Fed or the central bank that we're talking about, whether it's the US, the Canada, wherever, they may choose to actually rate hike to sort of slow that growth. Uh, we have seen that in the past. We have not seen it in a while, but we have seen that in the past. Uh, leading up to the pandemic, we were actually raising rates in the U.S. here. So that can be a response to a rapidly growing economy. So that is often a tool that they will use. When this happens, usually we see uh, a slowdown in equities. We see a jump in the U.S. dollar uh, as people sort of uh, move into cash in response to this a lot of times, as well as uh, the strength and confidence in the U.S. dollar tends to rise. And remember, a higher interest rate is like that dividend effect and attracts a foreign investors uh, to the dollar, right? Now, the next scenario we're going to talk about is going to have to be the opposite, cutting rates. Why might a central bank cut rates? Well, uh, generally, one of the main reasons that a central bank would cut rates would be if things are going not so good for an economy, things are slowing down uh, and, and not going too hot. Cutting rates, what that does is it allows it, uh, it makes it easier for businesses to actually borrow money. Cheaper rates basically make it easier for banks, uh, not banks, for, for companies to borrow money. And ultimately, the idea here is that that could lead to higher employment. It could lead to <clears throat> all sorts of good things for that economy to sort of stimulate it back into a healthy uh, growth, right? So that is pretty obvious. Now, the final one is a little interesting. What about if uh, you know you have a scenario in which the central bank says, hey, we're just gonna hold rates at where we're at? Well, usually what we see in this case is an economy that is rising at a healthy level and central banks don't really wanna do a whole lot about where sort of uh, the interest rate is at. They don't wanna raise it, they don't wanna cut it, they're happy where, we're th where things are at. Uh, ideally for the Fed, by the way, this usually looks like, according to them, a 2% inflation per year. Now, what that means is that, again, Things are going well, but they're not going too fast. We're not seeing like three or 5% inflation. We're not seeing 1% inflation, which would be more closer to even deflation, which is not good, right? These two things they don't want, but this, that might be good. And so in that case, they might want to hold rates where they're at. Okay, so all of that to say, uh, now let's talk about, again, we'll just recap on this idea here below. So you have uh, monetary policy in terms of interest rates, but also in terms of tapering and stimulus. Now, this is a really interesting topic. Right now in the US, it's a big debate. They're like, hey, you know, we need to, we need to cut the uh, spending from the Fed. It's really causing a problem for inflation. And then the inflation uh, or the Fed has been responding with, oh, it's transitory, it's not gonna be forever, and it's used to, to help keep things in the economy steamrolling back, right? So there's an argument and a conversation constantly uh, from people all over the government as well as you know the Fed about this concept of tapering and stimulus going on from the Fed. So uh, that can be a really controversial and interesting subject in markets as well. Uh, if tapering does not happen for a very long time, it can be very bad. We, we've heard the Fed be very stubborn recently. In fact, that's why we kind of see the dip in the dollar recently. We've heard from the Fed that inflation is likely to still be a problem for a while. Uh, it is transitory according to them, meaning that they don't expect it forever. But the idea is that uh, we are seeing inflation and they are also unwilling and sort of stubborn on the idea of tapering or reducing stimulus, reducing quantitative easing, right? 
They're not willing to step away from that. So what that does is it could lead to further inflation or the devaluation of the U.S. dollar. All those things to say, those are tools and uh, an overview of fundamental analysis for traders. There are more things in the toolbox to add. Uh, I do plan on doing more videos in the future. So what I do want to say is that if you made it to the end of the video, thank you very much for being here. Actually, if you made it to the end of the video, do me a big favor and comment down below in the comment section and just let me know that you made it to the end of the video. Just say, you know, hey, I made it to the end of the video. It would mean a lot to me and I'll try and heart your comment. And uh, with that said, guys, I hope this was helpful to you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below. Uh, but I do plan on doing more concepts and more trading uh, tips and educational stuff for free. So again, make sure to hit that subscribe button, like the video. And uh, with that said, guys, we'll see you back in the next one.